and they had watched the whole inheritance passing on wealth. They had no understanding of it. I had the understanding of the passing on wealth from the statutory side. Oh, okay. So I was able to infuse that information with the with the common law trust. The common law trust is the king's trust. It's mm. the perfect trust. It's the only trust that is whole. Mm. All these other trusts that people have are pieces, and they botch it. The only objective of a trust is to support the beneficiaries. It's not about taxes. It's about mm. beneficiaries, making sure your, your family survives. The only difference between uh, freedom and slavery is money. So you want your family to be born into money so that they can support the lesser. And you've got to plan that generations ahead. Wow. And this is about all of that. This is about how to do that. Okay. And uh, so, very serious stuff. Right. How often do you do these for people? I've been uh, consulting since 20... 15 and put and working and putting together trusts since uh, 1999. I know how many how many clients? I don't have a lot of clients because no. it's expensive, right? And I don't want to waste. Well, money. what's the expense? The books and what else? Well, you got to get the books and then it starts at twelve hundred dollars for six months and then the price goes up and the hourly price goes down so it depends okay it usually takes uh, two or three years to put together a trust right and I make sure you know how to do it oh, okay because I had a lot of bad experience putting them together for other people who never grafted it who never got it they never, never got the concept of it yeah they never got it in their heart so right I, I make you guys do it I make right hands on you guys do it and yeah it's like i graduated cal poly and learn by doing yes we learn by doing. and that's the motto cal poly okay so what it is i i met him at the magic conference which is the most superior water on planet earth you don't have to convince me you know it is i know okay no problem yeah and you know of congan and all that yeah i, I know enough to know that if you drink it you get better Oh, 100%, yeah. So that's, you don't yeah. have to sell me on it. Oh, no, I'm not selling anybody on it. Okay. You, you, by the way, there's no such thing with selling anything. You have to do what you're doing, is create the value, and then you see the benefit. And when you have the value and the benefit intact you are for preaching. your loved one. You are preaching. Huh? You are preaching right now. Oh, no, what I'm saying is once you get that yeah. in your heart and soul, yeah. Yeah. there's no no turning back. Right. This is it. Right. This is it. So I get what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. We're in the same core context right. where I get the water, he gets the young living, and they're all good for us. Uh -huh. This is the oil entity, this is the water entity, and this is this entity, and we don't. we want to protect it from the outside sources taking it because my revenue eventually it's going to go back to be very very high as I help people okay and I want to start to think about it. he's put the bug in my ear mm -hmm. Roberto mm -hmm. and um, and I thought you know that's really good because um, I'm a I'm a victor of a crime not a victim and uh, that crime happened in 2010 I ended up getting married. If I could, you know what, I'm single. Let me just go ahead and get married now that my life is getting back on track. I was, uh, our team was the top team in the world in 2011 with the Enagic Corporation out of Arizona. We were all news reporters. Okay. And so then, um, then it was good for me to go back to California where my homes were and build the business. And I kept building it and building it and building it and building it. Creating value to benefit ratio, not selling. I would transfer somebody's life and you will call me because it was benefiting you and I didn't have to sell. And I just, and then inevitably, all these machines kept selling. 
And then I got married on our cruise ship on May 23rd of 2010 with the Enagic company. And then a month and a half later, my husband that I married will try to kill me. Oh, one of those. Yeah, a narcissist, covert narcissist. And he was a very handsome man, very athletic, loved to do what I like to do, told me all the things I needed to hear. I was naive, thus I was deceived. I'm a preacher's daughter. And you know, I, I didn't know about... Psychopaths. No, I didn't have a clue. I never was exposed to that, you know? So he deceived me. And he was a very handsome man, come in blue eyes and blue jeans, that Taylor Swift country western song. And so um, he was incarcerated, obviously. And then Corinne Allen, she's one of the top brain specialist doctors. Do you know of her? He, he does. She's amazing. <laughs> so I was already in the loop with her with the Congo water because it does help every cognitive problem because all cognitive problems are dehydration of the brain. So did he. So then what we did was I told her, because I was like, I fell off the plane. I was in shock. Mm -hmm. And then I had to take my kids. It was just a nightmare. Were you going to interview me? Yes. Oh, this is it. Okay. But, but so the bottom line is I want, this is my first year back after being dormant on sabbatical, unwanted sabbatical mm -hmm. for about, well, 2010 to 2018. And so... As I'm going to go back into the business, I want to stay, continue to stay behind the scenes. And that's where I've been. And my way I do business is I helped him to become a success. I don't worry so much about me mm. making the business. I help him. Uh -huh. And in turn, if I help him with young living and help him with succeeding, he's going to help me like he did like for you right willfully came and helped you to move okay. because he sees value and benefit in you and so i just want to keep it that way and so i want to be prepared mm -hmm. before because i see we're a work of art we're all unique pieces we're a masterpiece p-e-a-c-e -E. and we all need to kind of contribute you have your piece and i'm going to learn from you okay. through these books all right so what so I need to start generating a bit more revenue because I went through a crash and I can't do this right now financially. I'm just getting debt free. Okay. So that's where I'm at. I wouldn't, this isn't something I'll want to start immediately because I've got to, this is my second meeting since the Queen Mary. So I, I'm not selling anything. No, I know you're not selling anything. You're telling me what I can do to prep for my future so that my assets are where I choose them to be, not where somebody else chooses right. to be. In fact, those books are written to convince you never to do it. Never to do what? Get a common law trust. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it weeds out the weak. Oh. If you're not strong enough, you can't do it, so. Oh. And yeah. It's, it's very dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. Really? Because you get into the realm of rich and powerful people. Wow. And when you start playing at that level, you, you better know what you're doing. Right. Because they don't want you to do it. No, they don't. Not at all. No. Jesus. So what really drove you? I know I shared, you shared your passion. It really put you over the hedge about really pursuing this. I because just got of, angry. I got angry because I'd already inherited from three, four statutory trusts, and I could see what the Patriots were doing with the common law trust. They had no understanding of it. They had no concept of what it was about. They didn't know. They were all looking at it in reference to getting out of taxes. They weren't looking at it as to setting up their future, long range future. Right. Most people don't understand your children create the future. Mm -hmm. Now you look today at these rights and everything. Self-entitlement. That nobody understood that they had to raise their children to create the future. Mm. They don't have any. Do you have children yourself? No. No? Just the world. <laughs> mm. I 
used to be a transcendental meditator. <laughs> Maharishi used to say there's two kinds of people. There's the householder, and they have children. And then there's the others, the sannyasi, I think is the name of it. And the whole world is your children. Wow. <laughs> That's what he said. I think wow. he's right, you know? Right. She don't have children. Well, I can say this and we'll close it because I want to get rid of to the airport. I don't know what time it is because what time is it? It is right now oh. 20 minutes to 9. Okay. Yeah, and he has to, you have to be there early. I got another 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay. Hmm. Now, anything else you think I should know? <laughs> Just highlights. Just that okay, I don't I, know to ask. That I, I don't in, know to ask. I was in Las Vegas a month before we got here because I had to find a place to live. Yep. And there was a waitress at our table. Uh, and, and I said, somebody said something about the, the trust business. And she was interested in that. And she had all kinds of little kinds of investments. And, uh, you know, what can you say in two minutes to somebody? <laughs> I said, well, you should get a common law trust because the children will never inherit anything. They will only get a cash flow earned by the corpus. Right? And so they'll never have access to the bulk of the money to blow it. And she went, hallelujah, that's exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't want the ch I don't want my children to ever get the bulk of the money. So I said, wait a minute. Which, how, does she want it for her? Is no, that she'll be dead. Oh yeah. yeah, so who does she want to have it? Her children would get a cash flow from the from the earnings of the corpus. Oh. So she has to have two trustees to dole out the money. Oh. But that kind of when you set it up like that, it exists forever, lasts forever. Oh, I see. And it goes to the grandchildren, the great grandchildren, and so. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just the point that your children can't squander it. Oh, they wouldn't be able to. No. By setting this up. No, yeah, right, by setting this up, they, they will never squander the bulk of the money. Wow. They'll just live off what would be the profits, the distribution of the profits. Got it. Ah. Wow. And then the, the, um, the corpus just keeps rolling over and making more money, and the trustees keep investing more and more, and it builds. Hmm. Yeah. Your grandchildren? No. Okay. Well, my daughters doing? are 20 and 21. Okay. Well, there's time. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, basically it's so your generations will not be slaves. The, the generations that follow will have financial power to be able to move and do the work. Now, would they need to do this? No. After it's set up. No. It's set up, you know, because in the setup of it, you arrange for your beneficiaries to get training. So basically, the protection for me uh -huh. would be if I did this and set this up well before I pass, obviously, right. then I would have all, all of my or a portion of my revenue tax deferred. What a cute name. <laughs> well, where they can't... I like it. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's all right. It's yeah. fine. So... Your advantage of doing this is astronomical. Okay. Beyond anything that you can imagine. I went through too much trouble dealing with <sighs> the tax situation, and I found, Frank and I found the answer. So when we finally were face to face with the DOJ, they, the only thing they could do is bribe us to get out of the mess that they created for themselves by challenging us. Oh. You can read it on the internet. What happened is they told us we are forbidden. Uh-huh. We are forbidden to ever fill out a 1040. You know what that means? Yeah. You know what a 1040 is? Yeah. Frank and I are forbidden to ever 
fill out a 1040. For the camera, explain what a 1040 is, please. It's the form you fill out to for doing your taxes. April to do your taxes. We can never fill one out. And so, what about if you work for a company or whatever? I'm tax exempt. I I never owe income taxes ever again. Because of the because but, of the trust. No, because the judge. You are forbidden to fill out a 1040. Okay, but what is if you work for somebody they want you to fill out a test? That's just too damn bad. So, but you can't work for them then? Oh, I can work for them. Oh. I, I just work as, in, as a private contractor. But how do you pay? No, no money goes out to taxes. Nobody what? None of your money, if you were to get a job with that, this a company, they can't take out for taxes? They can't. Okay. So I don't ever have to pay taxes. Again. Would that be for everybody? Everybody. They, everybody that would get this. No, this, that's, this that's has nothing just, to do with that. Oh. She just wanted to close this case. And oh. That was the bribe. Oh. To get Frank and I out of the courtroom. Oh. And we knew exactly what that meant <laughs> when we saw it in the paperwork. He and I said, they're, they're giving us, we don't ever have to pay income tax again. That was, that's the that was how they got us to close. So that's the incentive for you, just to get you to shut up. Yeah. Yeah. The, we Go bye-bye. We were corrupting not only the IRS agents, but the, the, but the attorneys. Wow. Because we were telling them the truth about inheritance. You know, inheritance is the core issue. Mm -hmm. You can take all the conspiracy theories and you can put them down the toilet. The only thing that matters is inheritance. Mm -hmm. Got it. Dang, that's amazing. Because Ooh. you're what what they don't want you to do is um, teach your children the truth because they want to own you. I know. It's just sick. They, that's how they own you. They own you through ignorance. Yeah. And this will explain it to you. Dang. Let me, let me read you something in the back, which I don't think sure thing. Roberto has even thought about or even knows is in here. Excuse me, I'm on chapter 8, so uh -huh. give, me, give me some credit. I'm on chapter 8 on that on volume 2. And where you haven't gotten to the back. Uh, well, yeah, let us hear what you have to say. I, I have to find it. <laughs> I have to read it. It's so extraordinary. It's about taxes. We don't put anything in here about taxes, except what we can. 526, page 526. Now you're gonna you're gonna have your jaw on the floor. <laughs> mm. <sighs> I'm tired. Okay, this is it's called Presentation oh, 11. Former IRS commissioner speaks out. Quote: People are kidding themselves. They don't have the buying power they used to have. A lot of people living today don't know what the buying power of success was before we decided to use excessive income taxes to punish success and estate and gift taxes to force every generation to start from scratch. T. Coleman Anders, IRS Commissioner, 1953 to 1955. God. Shh. See, Roberto, you hadn't read that yet. No, I remember that one. That's a good one. Oh, Can you read it one more time? Because I paused it while you were looking. and Just read that. Presentation 11, page 526. Former IRS Commissioner Speaks Out. Quote, people are kidding themselves. They don't have the buying power they used to have. A lot of the people living today don't know what the buying power of success was before we decided to use excessive income taxes to punish success and estate and gift taxes to force every generation to start from scratch. T. Coleman Anders, IRS Commissioner, 1953 to 1955. 
fr taken from Why the Income Tax is Bad, interviews with T. Coleman Anders, former Commissioner of Internal Revenue. U.S. News and World Report, May 25th, 1956. Wow. Wow. So, I get angry even reading it after oh. all these years. <laughs> God, I can only imagine. Yeah, you know, I, we, I know I share exactly the same passion as you do in, in the water. Because water is to be life. And, and you know, it just makes me sick to my stomach that, that, you know, our bodies are pools. And in Japan, the first thing when you go to the hospital is they test for your pH. They don't look at the blood pressure. They look at the pH because if it's low, it means you're susceptible to all kinds of ailments because that's the birthing ground. And not that the pH, okay, necessarily, it's not the cure, but it's gonna keep you protected against the inevitable sickness that will come with age, especially when we expose ourselves this way. So I get it. And then, and then you know, you go all over uh, like a pool, you know, and then they go, oh, that's the only thing they test. It's a swimming pool. You know, the pH of the fish, tanks and stuff, the pH, right? And then, which is so weird, the oxymoron of it all, is that if it's acidic, it, it's going to be the birthing ground for sickness, fungus, and whatever else, contaminants in the swimming pool, so you're not going to want to get in it. But then you know what they do to raise the pH is they add pH-based alkaline minerals like chlorine and lye and all the toxic chemicals and you know they raise the alkalinity to keep it balanced right but then what did it just do to the human beings that are in the pool you can't drink that water gross and so what i'm just saying is this they just constantly are fighting us it's like i say this i'm a recreation director okay and we are to recreate like you're doing the way that it was supposed to be from day one. See, if you do this, you'll have the money to make sure that the conga water stays free. You have to have money to make it happen. Yeah. This comes first. Then you pay the scientists. Amen. And they create it. Amen. Because Go ahead, that's why I stopped building my Young Living business. And... To me, it doesn't. What good is health and wellness, financial freedom, if you can't keep your finances? Yeah, it's, I agree. To, it's, as a Scorpio, to me, this is the core problem. If you don't get to the core, what's the point of building your business? Exactly. And you know what he just said. I thought to myself, I'm looking at it. I I I say things like recycle, reuse, repurpose. Right. If you go into eBay, there is a whole bunch. K8s, SD501s, uh, all of those systems that we have. Those are the people that bought that don't know what they got. Okay? They don't know what they got. They just go because somebody told them it was good, but they don't know what to do with it. If you do this, you don't have to do any of those other kinds of things. Right. So before this, this is just what I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, and I've been telling people tonight, I don't even care if I go past, I'm a 6A. I made all the money when I was active, and then it dissipates because it's residual income that you earn, it's a, it's a direct sale thing. You know, you don't keep making money if you don't get off your butt and do something with it. You could be a 6A and broke, make zero money. Like right now, I'm not really making money until I get active again, right? So then I was thinking to myself, do I really want that because then, then I have to report all that damn income on my 1099, yep. you know? I don't want to do that because then they steal it all. Then they know where I'm at, what I'm doing, where, the, what, I, yeah, I don't like it. Well, you're going to just disappear on paper when you finish with your trust. 
Gwen, could you explain how it works for foreign nationals? Because we met this really lovely Indian fellow today. Foreign nationals? Baha'i. What? Uh, he was, foreign nationals. For, he was from, from India. India. What? From India. Yeah, what about him? How does, how does the common law irrevocable trust work for uh, people that live abroad? They can't do it in their country if it's not a common law country. So British Commonwealth, if it's yeah. a British Commonwealth right. colony. But like sometimes in their country, uh, the rules have changed. So if I'm going to sell uh, a trust, a, a consulting contract to a foreign person, well, you read it in your contract. They are responsible for their own local laws to see if it is applicable. And, and sometimes it's not. And you have served people from overseas before. Yes. And uh, Ireland, for example, they have not been a republic long enough to have any history of court cases about trusts. They have none. So if they want to uh, go to court over a trust situation, the, the judges would have to go to uh, England or America to get some advice about how trusts so, are set up. Oh. Uh, what time is it? Looking down here. 8.56. Okay. We've got like two more minutes. Okay. I want to show this too. And I believe this is probably the reason I'm here. Um... I really feel like I have a total, complete calling. Everybody has a calling in their life. Yeah, right. It's a matter of acting on it. Right. You could have the calling. If you don't act, you got nothing. Well, the calling well, isn't strong enough. Yeah. If your why is not big enough to make you cry, it's not big enough. And if you don't know what your why is, you better figure it out. Or not. And you'll just be a drone in this society. What made me get to Las Vegas is the need to continue to teach my clients. I have, a, I have to set up at least 10 trusts and uh, before it'll be stable enough for it to grow on its own. Mm -hmm. And that was my, uh, my reason for You came to Sin City. There's a lot of drones. I mean crazy. Yeah, they don't I, know where I, they're going. I service the entire world. Right. Because I'm on the internet. Right. Anyway, so I was thinking to make some money selling some of my used systems cash purchase for now, then I don't have to report the income at all. Then I could set aside some funds to go ahead or like if I was to help, let's say I help him get to uh, his next level and he generates a revenue. You then, he would say, hey, thank you, and pay me a portion of the commission, you know, for, like a referral fee. Mm -hmm. And then I get paid in cash or services rendered that don't need to be reported. That's the way I've been living. I'm a caregiver, so I don't get paid. I get, hey, I'll pay for your airfare. I'll cover your costs. I'll buy you a meal. Uh, I'll put you up for you. Only have to pay four hundred dollars a month. See, you have to be screwy. You have to be. Sh sh I know. That's what I'm doing. Snaky. Lately. Right. Exactly. If you have and one of these, you don't have exactly. to. Exactly. Exactly. So because I'm going to be making a lot of money, now what you're saying is best to get in before you start making all that money because then you're absolutely you're, because it's harder to. You, it's to, better. It's you're, better you're, for you to have a checking account with a thousand dollars in it for your trust and just have it sit there until you can put the money in. It has to be seasoned. It has to be like two years you have to have your trust uh, functioning. So, you know, just if you can afford to put I barely have in any money in the bank. Well, I'm saying you have to have your pocket done and ready before you can put your fortune into it. Mm. Mm. And you can hold your whole trust for, by a thousand dollars in the bank account. Okay, real quick, could you just explain how this trust is set up? What kind of people it takes to set up the trust? What it takes to set up the trust is not, uh, is uh, investing in the books, reading the books, taking the time to learn, and then a minimum of twelve hundred dollars to get started. And you may have to put in twelve hundred, twelve hundred, twelve hundred because of your own schedule. 
uh, because it's interrupted. It takes a lot of time to put this together. What do you mean 1200 1200 1200 Well, 1200 for 1200 dollars if you have experience with putting together a trust, you can put together a trust in six months. Okay, $1,200 for six months. Most people, their lives are so blown apart and they're so, so disrupted that they have to keep putting in more money because they have to keep buying more time. And so if there's, tr there's grant, could you explain what the grantor is, the trustee is, and the beneficiaries? Oh, just like that. Don't you have to go? Yes. I don't think there's enough time. Okay. Thank you, Gwen. All right. Thank you.